All right, ladies and gentlemen, DDP versus Sean Strickland. I'm a little late on this one. It's been broken down from every angle, but you know what it's made me realize? No one knows the rules. All right, let's break it down. Welcome to the GSMC MMA podcast. I'm your new host, Jake Shahet. Let's dive in. Okay, obviously an incredible fight, and I want to start with the fact, uh, not a robbery. Not a robbery. In my opinion, it should have been a draw. Uh, judges had it around three, I mean two of the judges, for, for Drickus. That's where he won. Um, honestly, it could have been 3-2 either way, 48-47, either way. My opinion should have been 47-47, and if that were to happen... Um, the champ retains the belt, and you do an immediate rematch, which is what should be happening, which is what the fans want to see for the record. Drickus, after uh, the fight in the in the post-fight presser, he said uh, that Izzy, him and Izzy, he was asked about whether it's personal with Izzy, and he was saying no, that it's just uh, the fight he feels people want to see. And he's wrong about that. It's not the fight people want to see. Uh, I was on Chael's, Chael Sonnen's YouTube channel, and he did a little poll, um, little poll about, yeah, next fight, and overwhelmingly, people wanted to see DDP and Sean Strickland part two immediately, and so do I, because that was such a close fight, so close, it's impossible to call. Should have been 47-47, Sean retains the belt, we get part two immediately, and to be honest, right after the fight, Sean, um, he should have called for it. I mean, obviously, DDP gets interviewed first. He calls Izzy out almost reluctantly. Almost a reluctant call out there. But DDP, or meaning Strickland, should have come back immediately and said, uh, no, let's let's run it back. That was the wrong call. The judges made the wrong call. And, and now for the past, uh, what is it, three, four days now, he's been whining on Twitter, on social media's, uh, not the move. Also, on a side note, he, uh, dude, you gotta live with it. I mean, you rewatch the fight, and as a fighter, uh, it's it's understandable. You think you won, and uh, I would too in that position. I mean, he outstruck him one seventy, one twenty, insignificant strikes. He outstruck him. Um, and you know what? He he was getting that jab in. I mean, clear, decisive round one. Um, but what it's made me realize also is that there's no clarity even the the people at the top of the sport there's no clarity on how to call a fight on how to sorry ref a fight judge a fight is it damage are we prioritizing damage there was a moment in the fight where uh john anik and dominic cruz were talking um and cruz was saying that despite the fact that sean is on his back foot he's doing most of the damage and uh john corrected him that uh that's not how we judge mma Right, we judge it, I guess, by pressure, by control, and by those factors. Drickus overwhelmingly has the win. But if we're looking at damage, I mean, it's it's close, and and Drickus, I meaning Sean, outlands him by like one and a half times. With that being said, it's tough to know. It's tough to know what the price of a jab is compared to the price of like a flashy right hook or a snappy kick. What Drickus has is his significant strikes that he landed were more significant than the ones Sean landed. Uh, by that I mean they were they were flashier, they were uh, snappier. You know, Sean had that jab that that left jab, and it's so quick. And after the fight, Drickus was saying it feels like a boulder hitting you, which is telling, man. It's a strong punch. It's a strong punch, even if it doesn't look flashy. It's an effective punch, and we saw. How DDP's face looked afterwards. He was beat up, man. That 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 black eye that he couldn't open, sw- swollen shut. He'll need time to recover. Um, Sean obviously also cut up, but uh, according to him anyway, that was from the headbutt. Uh, and sort of if you go it, during the fight, the commentators said it was an elbow. Um, if you rewatch the fight, it seems like he's right. There's a moment in the third round, I believe, where Sean is kind of, when they're in the clinch, Sean is up against the fence, 
DDPs below him, and he comes up, and the back of his head, inadvertent, by the way, this is not an intentional headbutt, but nevertheless, hits that left eye and splits it open. Um, and the commentators were saying that uh, it, it was because of an elbow. Um, but it seems, yeah, that Sean's right, and he later tweeted, he tweeted this week that that uh, headbutt made it hard for him to see, but he didn't want to take the coward's way out and make it a no contest. Which is stupid, by the way. Not that, not that he... D- Look, if you know it's a headbutt, which I don't know that he knew, but if you know, you you tell the ref in terms of... I mean, the odds of it being a no contest from that split eye, he would have been able to make that decision in the five minutes he has of rest. The doctor would have... They didn't stop the fight between rounds. It wasn't that bad of a cut to where you stopped the fight for that. You know, but what it could have done is it could have alerted the judges to the fact that that is not an elbow and maybe that little bit of difference where uh, the, the cut they know that the cut instead of being a legal strike it's an illegal strike and maybe that sways the round but by the way that's a round Sean lost on the judges scorecards I believe that that's uh, round three so you got to call that out if you're Sean and you knew that could have swayed the fight had he said something but he didn't and so we have that close Split decision, loss. One other thing I wanted to talk about in reference to all of this, uh, and kind of in reference to the rules as well, is what is the price of a takedown, right? A takedown alone, if you don't do anything with it. We saw uh, DDP take Sean up until the fifth round, down at will. You know, he started stuffing them in the fifth round, um, and he did a better job of predicting where they were coming in, and that's why I thought he kind of decided, and it seems everybody thought that he decisively won the fifth round. The first and the fifth round belonged to Sean, without question. Um, And yeah, in that fifth round, stuffing the takedowns. But um, inside of round five, it seemed DDP was mostly getting takedowns whenever he wanted to, but, and it's a big but, he was doing nothing with them. They were takedowns for the sake of takedowns. And so uh, my question on the rules, and it, it seems to be a hot topic of debate, what's the value of pressure? What's the value of a takedown without control and without ultimately damage? Because the goal of a fighting sport should be to damage your opponent. I mean, l- let's put the UFC aside for a second. If you're in a street fight, which the UFC, which MMA is supposed to be a simulation of, kind of as close as we can get to a true fight without, you know, killing each other. If, if you're in the street, and somebody takes you down scary, if you can get up without any damage done, why do you care? Well, I mean, you're, you're, you're getting back up, okay, it's annoying. It gives you something to think about for the first time, second, third time, and then, okay, what's the price of your takedown if you can't do anything with it? If we get back up and we get right back to the same fight, it's uh, if you have 10 seconds of control time with not a single strike landed, you might as well have not taken the guy down. There's a claim and there's an argument that DDP was the only one wrestling, right? He's the only one using that and that that, that should give him some sort of bonus. I don't know. One counterexample and uh, where it gets tricky is uh, let, let's let's think about the second round. I don't know if you guys remember the P- Peter Yan, Aljamain Sterling fight two, not the first one. By the way, Aljo knows the rules and abuses them. That's another. That's for another day. But uh, but his uh, his grounded hand to not get kneed in the head is is such a big part of the reason why uh, people dislike him. Neither here nor there. But uh, let's go to that second round, um, in the second fight where there was a debate. I mean, Sterling Aljamain won decisively. There was no debate about whether he won the round, but the debate was whether it's a ten nine or a ten eight. Right, and what he did in the round is he eliminated any sort of offense from Jan. He he was on his back. He held him. I don't know. I don't think he did that much damage though. It was just complete control for five minutes. Um, and obviously at that point you win the round. You do have to if a fighter is able to establish a dominant position for a long period of time and it's a, it's a big end and avoid any damage. 
Because if you're on the bottom, if, if you're in top position and the guy on the bottom is throwing up, uh, submission attempts is throwing up, I and mean, hell, there's guys that get knocked out by up kicks, right? That's happened. That's technically they were in a dominant position and they got knocked out. So given that you're in a dominant position and that you avoid damage from the other guy, you're obviously going to win the round. You did do more there. Um, I'll also remind you guys of the Cyril Gan francis and Ganu fight where Gan was, was winning the first two rounds. Francis supposedly two torn ACLs, uh, and he had those like kind of knee braces on. Two torn ACLs was ineffective striking, and then he did something really unexpected that we haven't seen from Gan before or since then. And to be fair, I think he's only competed. He vacated the belt, and he damn near knocked out Tyson Fury since then in a boxing match, so he's obviously <laughs> not going to be wrestling there. Um, but, uh, but yeah, he took Cyril down, dragged him to the mat and held him there and won the fight on the strength of that. So if you control a guy enough, you're obviously not going to give, if you're not taking damage and you're controlling a guy, you're not going to give the fight to the other guy. But that wasn't the case in the DDP Sean Strickland fight. And it's difficult to, uh, to kind of pr presume, propose that those six takedowns aren't a big reason why DDP won the fight. And the pressure, the pressure he was applying. But again, if you're putting on the pressure, even if you're throwing combination, he threw a lot of leg kicks, especially early. And Sean, masterful, as he always is, at checking those. Um, and it hurts both guys when you're checking him like that. And uh, Dr Drickus kept, I think they waned a bit, but he kept throwing them for a good amount of time. And tough, tough fighter, tough fighter, no question there. Um... But, yeah, just a question. I don't have answers. To me, though, it, uh, it seems like damage should be your criteria. Not pressure, not control. They're factors, don't get me wrong. But ultimately, damage is the number one thing. Now, unfortunately, damage is difficult to quantify. It's difficult to judge, right? Uh, there's significant strikes. Like I was saying earlier, what's the price of a jab versus an overhand right, snappy overhand right? That looks sexy. That looks flashy. It's what uh, kind of the difference between the combinations. Do you look at the face? I mean, some guys bleed way easier. The Diaz brothers have scar tissue everywhere. You nick them, they're bleeding. I remind you of that uh, first Conor McGregor, I mean, both Diaz, uh, meaning both uh, Nate versus McGregor fights, he was bloodied. Uh, but the first one that Nate won... Those first two rounds, he was getting pieced up, to be fair. But if you look at the end, it, it looks like McGregor mauled him, when in fact, Nate won the fight. So, uh, you know, that, how much do you take that into consideration? And it does sway the judges. It does sway the judges when one guy's bloodied. And that, that headbutt, if they known it's a headbutt, again, you see a bloodied guy, you think it's from a legal combo. It's different when you think it's from an illegal combo. So, uh, hard to know. Hard to know. What can be said, though, about this fight uh, is both guys answered a ton of questions. Let's, if we back up a year, nobody, nobody knew who DDP was 13 months ago. And nobody would have thought Sean would be in this position. I mean, we can, nobody knew Sean either 13 months ago. You know, they, they've had... Such a rise, such an immediate rise. Nobody gave, and probably rightly so, DDP or Sean a chance in their last fights. Robert Whitaker, DDP. I mean, Rob is uh, one of the greatest at 185 of all time. Regardless of what happens the rest of his career, regardless if he if he goes on a Tony Ferguson end of, I hope not because he's a fan favorite and a favorite of mine as well. But, you know, if he loses his next three fights and is out of the UFC, still one of the greatest at 185 to ever do it. Seeing DDP beat up on him like that was insane. I mean, you saw maybe one of the best fighters of all time in that octagon. Or, you know, or Robert Whitaker underestimated him. Likely, it's a guy you've never heard of. Everybody thinks you're going to beat him easily. Those are the trickiest fights, you know. 
But it's clear, one thing is clear for both of these guys after the fight is that they are legitimate champions, legitimate championship contenders for the next, uh, I don't know, for the next five years. They'll, they'll be around at least, you know? Uh, same with, with Sean, the stories. There's a this a kind of nice reciprocity in both stories. Sean, uh, nobody gave him a chance in the Izzy fight. Nobody, and the the first time people really heard his name was when he got knocked out by Alex. <laughs> That's what people knew him for before he became champ. Before he became probably the most popular person in the UFC. Crazy to say. Who would have thought that six months ago? Who would have thought that after he got knocked out by Alex? Nobody. Nobody was giving him a chance. He steps in. Nobody's giving him a chance. And again, the situation that Rob was in against DDP is very similar to the one that Izzy was in against Sean. You get a guy, the whole world thinks you're going to walk right through this guy. Maybe it's hard to motivate yourself. And now Izzy was in a, in a similar position, or meaning so, Izzy was at the height of his career before then. He'd just beaten Alex, beaten his personal boogeyman for the first time. One of the greatest moments in UFC history, one of the greatest moments in sports in 2023. Um, and he, he's riding high, or was that 2022? That might have been late 2022. Um, and then he gets in there with Sean, and Sean just walked him down. That's one thing DDP did a great job of, is uh, Izzy's a counter-striker. DDP had Sean on his back foot the whole time. Big reason he won. On his, uh, He was constantly applying the pressure. He was throwing takedowns. He was wrestling. He was controlling the range. And uh, Granted, all of that. Nevertheless, who did more damage? Who had more significant strikes? You know? How do you stack those things up? It's, it's very difficult. It's very nuanced. It should have been a draw. We should be running it back right now. Rematch. Um, it's what the fans want to see. You know? Uh, but, yeah. They both answered so many questions on whether they're legitimate fighters. DDP on his cardio. I mean, everybody was doubting the man's cardio going into this fight. The narrative before it was two rounds, DDP, if he doesn't knock Sean out first two, maybe three rounds, it's over. It's Sean's fight. Sean has the cardio, and to be fair, he is a cardio machine. Dude could have gone for another ten rounds after that, those five. But man... DDP did not slow down either. Those last 30 seconds of the fight, they were they were insane. They were throwing everything. Throwing the whole kitchen sink at the end there. And DDP had more gas left in the tank as well. It was incredibly impressive to see, especially with his style. He's not measured and even and I say that he was uh, it was controlled and it was tactful the way he fought, but he was throwing, you know, and he was walking forward. And Sean's much more, he's closed, he's the Philly shell, he, he has those kind of solid, but they're not, again, not flashy, what lost him the fight, uh, s straights, jabs, um, and you could kind of, that makes more sense a little bit as to how a fighter could uh, weaponize the, their cardio, how, how a fighter could last there. Um, DDP much flashier, much more pop, and... Uh, on those kicks, too, not just the punches. That left kick, man, when he was throwing it to the leg again, Sean was checking it. But that left body kick was there all night, and it was landing. That one must have hurt because, man, did it snap. It made a sound every time it landed. And I think he even la landed a few head kicks with that left. Um, yeah. Great fight. Great fight. And what's next for both of these guys? That's the, the question seems clear with DDP and I've kind of been I've been saying that the fight we want next run it back DDP Sean 2 it's not what's going to happen um, there's speculation around UFC 300 I think still that Izzy DDP could be the main event which is a little silly to me on Ariel's show he, he was saying that he was speculating yesterday that maybe that's the fight they're going to make for UFC 300 and then I, I think they announced uh, Kayla Harrison 
Kayla Harrison versus Holly Holm, who got beat by uh, Myra Buena Silva her last fight, and we just saw an absolute stinker, let's be honest, between Pennington and Bueno Silva. That was not a good fight, and uh, Bueno Silva lost. Pe- and let's not take anything away from from Pennington. She's a, a good fighter. She's been around for a long and for a long time. Um, great to see her win. I'm getting a little bit off topic, <laughs> but UFC 300, not the surprise we were anticipating. Probably not the surprise we wanted, to be honest. Holly Holm, really? Kayla Harrison, she hasn't even fought. She's been fighting in the PFL. Her first fight in the UFC. That's not what the fans want. Come on. Come on, Dana. (laughs) Either way, there's speculation about DDP versus Izzy at 300. Too quick of a turnaround for DDP. That was a tough fight. Five rounds, difficult. We saw his face. I'm sure his body's hurting. He'll need time to recover. We have no idea whether Izzy wants to come back. You know, he's after the Strickland fight, he stepped away from the sport a bit. He got out of the gym. Is he ready to come back right now? I was uh, watching uh, kind of the Instagram stories thrown through Instagram after the fight, um, and Izzy was recording the post-fight presser with DDP when DDP was saying that, uh, yeah, Izzy's next. It's what the fight fans want to see. And uh, Izzy gave a little thumbs up, so it seems that fight will happen. That fight will happen, but April 13th is simply too soon for both guys. It doesn't make sense. I won't be 300. Um, that is an exciting fight, granted, and we had that huge buildup last time, which it will. Uh, people are not as excited about that now. There's the Battle of Africa. Let's do it in Africa, by the way. Dana was saying that uh, he was asked if uh, now that there's a South African champ, if, if they're finally going to make UFC Africa happen. And he was saying, absolutely. But the two Africans in Africa, have them fight. Um, it's an exciting one. Not the match they should have made again. And what's next for Sean Strickland? That's the other question. You know? People have been floating. I've seen a few, a few folks float. Chimaev? Really? Chimaev? Number nine, I believe, in the 185 rankings. Uh, who, who has he beat? I mean, Usman. But uh, Usman had a different weight class post-Leon knockout. He's not the same fighter anymore. He's a great fighter. Let's not take anything away from Kamaru. But uh, he's not the champ, and it's not like that was a flashy victory, and it's against a guy that fights at 170. No, absolutely not, Shemaev. Um... Rob's up against Paulo Costa, right? Costa has a bad history of making weight, of making fights, so maybe that'll happen. <laughs> Meaning the Rob Whitaker, Sean Strickland. But it's kind of a weird spot for Strickland now. Where is he supposed to go? Or does he just wait around to see who the winner of this DDP Izzy fight is? And uh, we see him back. But but it's a, it's weird. It's weird for a guy to fight for a championship coming off of a loss. Even if it shouldn't have been a loss. You know, even if people think it shouldn't have been a loss. I don't have a huge problem with it being a split decision. Should have been a draw, again, in my opinion, and we run it back immediately. Sean retains the belt, but we do part two. Um, But that's not what happened, and Sean didn't call for the immediate rematch, uh, which he should have. And now he's just been <laughs> going off on socials, which I, I don't know what that's adding. I guess drama. Not in a positive way, you know? The, the reason he's become a fan favorite is of how, like, real, relatable he is. People don't like this. How long are you going to complain after a fight? Even if you think you won, that's not what people want to hear. You move on, you're a fighter, you accept the result at some point because it's not going to change. They're not going to go back and shift it. I, I, you won't get a second fight. Call for a second fight if you want a second fight, but... Uh, don't try to do revisionist history. Interesting position. Both guys answered a lot of questions. Sean's a great fighter, too. I know I've been hyping up DDP. Um, 
But he answered a lot of questions, too. He had uh, the one great performance uh, against Izzy, and he backed it up this time. He backed it up. Both guys are real champions. Real champions. And he fought a, a great fight. They gave us a, a great product. You know, the the breakdown and the passions now. Uh, p- people are, are talking about it so much. It continues to be broken down. It's been four or five days. Today is, uh, I'm recording on a Wednesday. So yeah, it's it's a Saturday night. It's been a whole four days here since the fight, and people are still talking about that. We're not talking about the next card. Um, but ultimately, we accept the result, and we're in an interesting spot as as fight fans. Let me know who you want to see next. Whether you're more interested in Izzy versus uh, DDP, which does have a lot of hype. They've already built that up. Or whether they should be running it back. Whether the company's making a mistake. And uh, stay tuned. Subscribe to the podcast. To the YouTube channel. I'll be on. We'll be discussing UFC 300. We'll be discussing this upcoming weekend's fights. We'll be breaking down other fights from 297. And I'll be here for the long run.